Okay, so um, first to address the question, it's a really good one, of the importance of other artists, particularly artists from the past. Um, it's a good question. I remember I, Robin Mayer, who's a user of mine, said, you know, the research is kind of a given, you'll probably always do it, you really should also look, be looking at, at really making work. And that was a very valuable thing for me because I do, I get kind of this real interest in other names, these lineages. And this is a nice question you asked me because it gives me a chance to kind of reconnect. At the beginning I felt maybe I was talking a little too much about the importance of familial experience. But one of the things I sometimes feel that, um, that art historical characters or sort of say mythological figures have sort of become or some sort of extended familial relationship. And with all the baggage, you know, you're Hispanic, so you know what I'm talking about. All the baggage of the sort of the, the qualities of the way these characters keep persisting, you know, like ancestors sort of sitting there behind your face all the time. So that they're, they're present a lot. I mean, I, I do think, without being too melodramatic, I, I think the idea that you're kind of talking to the dead is a big part of making uh, works, because you're always stepping on the dead. <laughs> You know, you're always wandering into that terrain. And there is something also, to be honest, you know, there's an old joke that people who are on books too often, any part of books, publishing, reading, writing, develop peculiar characteristics after a while. I think there's a certain morbidity that creeps into the study of the arts. And, and it is a little bit like the Hispanic tradition of picnicking in cemeteries. You know, that's sort of what I sort of feel like art school is, is this picnic in a cemetery. You sort of say, oh, here's, you know, Uncle Matisse or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but in a way, it's it's funny. I remember writing a funny short story where the art historical characters needed to hear their names called, and then they could sort of come forward and warm their hands over the sound of their name, or they could be useful in some way, or they would recede or stand back. But certainly, yeah, it's a big. I think they're always, particularly. It's been commented recently. I know Lisa Baldessera wrote about it well, with reference to James James Gordon Neer. She said, you know, painting. One of the things painting could conceivably do is be in many ways, uh, a kind of art culture's way of, of staring at itself or becoming, it's, it's become a kind of, at the moment anyway, a motif for a kind of self-consciousness. Or David Hickey said, photography didn't replace painting, it made painting terribly self-conscious of its visual outcomes. Now, this is a good way of talking about it. Um, painting as a sort of self-conscious medium is always has to be self-reflexive. And for me, I've never been that attached to a kind of intellectual or ironic uh, pragmatic or tactical approach to history, uh, but I do value the postmodernist idea that history is really schismatic, it's really broken up. So I'm interested in the idea of approaching history through these islands of myths of individuality, myths of these people, myths of communities, myths of these people, so they become a kind of family tree. Now, working down in the basement, <laughs> Uh, how does that apply to content? Your other interesting question, you know, are these really two questions or one question about what is the content of the work? Um, I'm, I'm interested in the, in the long run with what I hope is mature work now, or starting to become mature work, because I've taken a long, long time to grow up and actually make okay work. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping with that work that you get past the point of working with impulses, which can be a kind of holy grail, the same way naivete can be kind of a holy grail, but it's not always really, in the end, the thing you should be pursuing. It, it's, it's important as a signal. But to get past it, um, the idea of, you know, are, are there values in your work? I think that it changes your relationship with these other figures when you start to try and question the values you see expressed in bodies of work. You get past the myths of the individuals that we're dealing with. And I think the soft language in between an artist and all the critical outcome, all the reception of the work, that sort of soft mythal, mythical language that's very transposable, is very viral, is where we operate and that that point to operate is the point where values are being formed. You're trying to say, yes, this work actually stands for something. This work means something. By virtue of the fact that it is, okay, this is a myth that's very important to me, an old modernist myth, but by virtue of the fact that the work has some kind of autonomy. It can speak from the wall for itself. Um, it can create a kind of experience for the viewer that, that exists outside of other dialogues and that, that really does, is, is a language. 
Um, it doesn't need other language necessarily to support it. It attracts other language. It's an attractor, like magnetic filings to a magnet, but it's not necessarily uh, something that really requires other kinds of mediation. I really do hang on to that idea. To a certain extent, that's probably why some of those ghostly characters are very important to momentum, uh, or privilege, or, or permission, or precedent, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, what are the values? <laughs> it's harder to talk about. Although I think right now, with the recycled materials, or these materials that are kind of falling out of use, part of the values are about um, the ability for a, an aesthetic, uh, or a feeling, or a memory to sustain itself past other changes of weather, you know, other changes of condition, other changes of politics that surround it. You know, can an aesthetic sustain itself? Um, can a material change its identity several times and still speak as a material and not just speak as some form of waste, as some demonstration of waste, some sort of uh, protest at its own waste? Its ability to continue to do that as a survivability and speaking for that survivability. That's very important as something that I would like the work to speak for. Um, maybe that's something superficial from the point of view of the viewer, because I think painters can only see about this far in front of their nose. But I think that that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for.